These are just a few of the custom pieces that I've collected over the years. What is up folks, my name is Justin Kana, and today I wanna to talk about a few of the really beautiful design details on all of these pieces, and then answer the question, why go custom at all? Let's start with this knife handle. This is something that I teased in the Suisen Enox review a couple weeks back in the uh, Chef Knife Bonanza video. I asked you folks if you wanted to see a custom handle on this. Most of you said yes, and so I shipped this off to Isaiah Schrader. He put a new handle on it for me, shipped it right back. It was super easy. I went with this colorway specifically to kind of signify my time in the Pacific Northwest. No, I'm not going anywhere, but these are kind of all of those colors that you associate with this area, the blues, the greens, the browns. And in addition to making this handle by hand with some amazing materials, I have those up on the screen right now, he also like pushed the knife deeper into the handle itself. I know I complained that there was the gap in between before with which some people like as kind of a design detail. I wasn't the biggest fan of it and it overall makes this a knife that I'm super stoked to use now. It's not that I wouldn't use this knife because of that tiny design detail, but I absolutely prefer it this way. Another thing I really like, which may or may not be intentional, I know with burl woods especially, you don't really have the choice all the time, but there's the right amount of smoothness and texture to this where it feels like you're holding something that is unique and can stand on its own, but it's also not like super gnarly in your fingers. If you're interested in giving one of your knives a similar makeover, I've got two links for you. One, go check out the photo of this knife on my Instagram. There's a code in that post that gives you a discount on any of Isaiah Schrader's custom knife handles. You can then go to his site and save some cash. That is down low in the description. Next up, I shared this a few weeks back on my email newsletter, Justin's List, and I actually ended up copying it. This is from a maker out of Austin, Texas. His name is Iron to Adamant is what he goes by. And he posted a photo of these wooden handles that he would put on tweezers. And I was semi-curious, semi-skeptical. And so I reached out, I said, hey, if I send you some tweezers straight from JB Prince to you, so these weren't tweezers that I already have in the toolbox, they're brand new. And I said, can you put some wooden handles on it? He said, hell yeah. And before I knew it, I had these in my hands. So I went with the black tweezers just because it's not a color that I already have. And I really like the way that these came out. Comment down below, do you use them this way or this way? I don't know how to say that. With the uh, prongs on the top or prongs on the bottom? Which, what's your preference? And I say I was skeptical because these are a pretty simple tool. They're really bare bones, but they really get the job done. And I fear that adding additional features onto something that already works, it's a, if it's not broken, don't fix it mentality, right? But if you use these daily, if you do a lot of tweezer plating, having a larger grip is a real game changer. It's like the theory on why I think people like Bob Kramer style knife handle so much. They're a little bit beefier. You have something to hold on to as opposed to this super thin profile piece of kit. But as much as I like the brown wood with the gold pin and the black tweezers, I think it looks really slick. I don't see any hardware fusion happening here. Like I don't know if the pin actually goes into the tweezers. It looks like it's just a really strong adhesive that bonds the two together. So you gotta be careful. I'm washing these by hand and trying to keep them away from any heat sources. Iron 2 Adamant is linked up down below if you wanna check out any of his stuff. He does a bunch of custom wooden sayas as well as selling uh, used and sometimes new chef knives for really affordable prices. And he's just a hilarious follow because his copy in all of his posts is just really funny. You have to go check it out. This one I've covered before on the channel. This is an E. Dehelleren spatula that I've bent. I have a whole video during an AMA where I talked about why I bent it this way, how I bent it this way, but the reason that I wanted to cover it in this custom gear video is because I wanted to share that it doesn't always have to be you go out and spend a couple hundred bucks on a custom handle or you get something done specifically. The DIY element is real and you can take gear that you already have and tweak it in a way that you know that you use it to then make it your own. Also something that I've covered here before, the Town Cutler Scabbard. This one is obviously specifically made for this knife. I've talked about it before, but Town Cutler also does a bunch of leather scabbards that are kind of like stock fit, not just to their knives, but to kind of like accommodate the range of different knives that people already have. These are 100% leather, really high quality stitching, plus some of them have like the really nice color accents all the way around. I don't think that Galen and the guys at Town Cutler are doing that much custom uh, stuff on a client to client basis anymore. But I mean, like if you're gonna have the choice between like using one of these, we've all used these like plastic knife guards before or something like this, 
which one are you gonna pick? Plus, in addition to expanding like crazy, they just got like a new warehouse space where their consistency is gonna be better, the quality is gonna be better. Through Galen and a couple of their other staff members, they have that chef to maker mentality on both sides. They have empathy to what it feels like to work the line and be a sous chef and then also make gear for those people. Next up, and probably the most expensive spoon that I own, this is one that I had a hand in designing. It was right after I was finishing up at French Laundry, I, a friend and I joined forces and we were going to take over the world with the best quenelle spoon that we could offer on the market. So I used this as kind of design inspiration. I went over to a friend's house and they had a set of silverware by David Mellor and it had this style of handle, which I liked because it was fatter and it could kind of like rotate in your hand as you were doing the quenelles. Then I of course picked one of my favorite spoon bowl shapes, the Lady Hamilton. I lobbed it off about halfway and then I had some guy uh, cast it in resin and then we attached the two so now it's like a franken spoon and it works pretty well as far as like the way that it feels when you do the motion it's not the sturdiest uh joint connection here so i don't work with this but um yeah this is something that i had a hand in designing it's not something that i'm really looking to bring to market asap i know that the, there's enough of you that want my apron to come to market first so that's definitely number one on the priority list but yeah it's a it's something that i enjoy and i see myself doing uh in the future staying in that same lane something that's a little bit more practical, I picked up this spatula at a garage sale. It's made in Japan, had a really ugly handle on it, but I liked it because it had the, it, it was squared at the top, but it wasn't pointy square, it was like rounded square. And then the flex on this is amazing. It's 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 great. It's super flexible all the way up uh, to the, where it joins, but then it's also, it stays. It doesn't bend in any, in any way, shape, or form. So it's very thin. You can get under things on sheet trays. You can still flex as much as you want, and it's not going to distort it shape on you. I took this previously ugly piece and I brought it to someone who did, does a bunch of woodworking and him and I worked together to create this handle. So we picked out the wood together. He showed me a couple mock-ups of like the shape of the handle and the contours and how it was like beveled down in certain areas. He hammered in the pins by hand for 20 to $40. That was about the range that he charged me. I am the only person on planet earth that has this spatula. And so what I hope that brings to you is that maybe there's some lady at the farmer's market who uses a wood lathe to make pepper mills or maybe there's some guy you know who makes like cutting boards and you can just go and ask hey have you ever put a handle on a knife before have you ever done a offset spatula before and you'll be surprised these creative projects where you can support what they do you're getting a one-of-a-kind piece in return it's a no-brainer I've said it before and I will say it again if you're gonna be working with these tools for hours on end you should love them they should feel like yours and once you've gotten some basics down as far as care and maintenance goes it can be an incredible rewarding process and I love the process. The reason I say get those basics down is because I would 3000% rather you go spend 60 bucks and get a new set of stones or a new one single nice stone and then continue to improve your sharpening skills rather than get a saya for your dull knife. Speaking of sayas, shout out to Dazfi for this uh, amazing art on one of my sayas for my Togiharu uh, Sujihiki knife. Another great option if you're interested in getting some of your stuff pimped out. These cosmetic changes might give you the short-term high of a new purchase, but trust me, you do not want to be the guy with the dope-looking spatula, but you don't really know how to cook fish. Or the gal who has the one-of-a-kind knife handle, but the blade is dull AF. Every single maker that I've highlighted is, of course, linked up down below in the description. Question of the day, though, do you have any custom gear in your kit? Let me know what it is, and then, of course, what is the story behind it? Because that's usually the best part, with with any gear like this. It comes with a narrative instead of just getting Amazon primed to your doorstep. If there's a maker you'd like to see me cover in future videos, don't tell me, tell them. We are getting to a community size where the collective has some serious leverage and I love that. Also quickie reminder of that discount code on my Instagram that corresponds to the photo of this knife where you can save some cash on a custom handle from Isaiah Schrader. I'm at Justin Kana on Instagram for any of you that aren't following me there yet. Also, if anybody comments on that photo, you probably had your eyes on these the whole entire video. This is the 1.0 Town Cutler Mini Offset Spatula. This is the 2.0, much sturdier rivets, much more consistent on the wood. Also comes in a couple different colors. I'm gonna give a couple of these away to people that comment on that photo. So go over there next, follow me if you're so interested, but just comment on the, on the photo and let me know what you think. And I'll pick one of you to get this as kind of a I can't guarantee it's gonna come for the holidays, but you'll you'll get it soon enough. Thank you so much for your attention. As always, my name is Justin Kana. Have a good one.